Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to take a look at another collaboration beer. This one is a three-way collaboration. On the home side, it is one-third Norwegian, and on the away side, it's another third Norwegian, and also one-third Dutch as well. And all three of the breweries involved in this one, I've reviewed for you before, although I do have a good bit more experience with the Norwegian ones. So hopefully, I can get some more from the Dutch brewery at some point soon. So for this review then, we are going to head to Drammen, to the south of Oslo, and we're having a look at another beer from Hand Brugeriet. So this one is the Death by Disco. It's an Imperial Milk Stout coming in at 10% ABV. They're calling it an Imperial Blueberry Sweet Stout, which I think will be very, very nice. And this one is brewed in collaboration with Servicium, who come from Oslo. These guys are a gypsy brewery, and it's also a collaboration with Brauerei Frontal, who are from the Netherlands, eh, from Breda to be specific actually. So um, yeah, really curious to see how this one turns out. Um, I've reviewed two beers from Servicium before, um, the Chocolate Salty Christmas Balls and the Satanic Panic, and both of those were very nice. I need to try an IPA from them at some point actually, that has to be the next beer that I try from uh, Servicium. And it was a stout, I believe, called North that I had from Frontal. Um, a number of years back actually. It's not. It's been a long time since I've reviewed some of the more kind of quirky Dutch beers actually, so that's something that I definitely need to fix at some point in the future. I've reviewed a good number of beers from Hamburg area, of course. These guys were one of the first Norwegian breweries that I ever encountered. Norwegian Wood and the Bellisk IPA are still my uh, favourite beers that I've had from them. But since this beer has a Dutch connection as well, a big shout out to the guys down at the Dutch Beer Collective. That's Thomas Opent, um, Dutch Beer Geek, and also Beer Beer Geek Holland, they're doing some very, very nice videos down there. They produce videos in English every so often. I wish they did it more often because then they'd be telling the world about Dutch craft beer, which in my experience is uh, is very, very good. But check out the, check those guys out anyway. Very nice guys and hopefully within the next year I can get down there and meet them, do some filming and do a beer festival or something like that. We have talked about that but we just kind of need to make it happen. But rest assured it will at some point soon. It just We just need to sort out time and things like that. We were looking later into 2020 but I'm away in the States and then we've got coronavirus and things like that too so yeah but big shout out to the guys at the Dutch Beer Collective make sure you check them out on uh, Facebook, Instagram and uh, YouTube and everything like that so um, yeah really looking forward to trying this one and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer I've always been a big fan of uh, the Imperial Milk Stout so hopefully this one turns out to be nice but knowing these three breweries I think it will be. So as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Hamburg, Geriet, Servicium and Brauer Frontal. Hopefully I can add more to those lists at some point in the near future but you probably will see more Hamburg, Geriet and Servicium beers before you'll see Frontal. As I say I want to get more Dutch beers reviewed for you on the channel over the next little while. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch, or province, whatever it is that takes your fancy. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Norwegian beers that I've reviewed for you, and another one for all the Dutch beers. The Norwegian one is added to fairly regularly, the Dutch one a bit less so, but hopefully we can fix that in the future as I said, and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos, and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Handbrugeriet first off then, since these guys are the home brewery. So Handbrugeriet, as I've mentioned to you before, are from the town of Drammen to the southwest of Oslo. And this town is located in Buskerud County and the city has a population of around 63,000 people. But the city apparently started off as three separate seaport towns which were eventually merged together to form Drammen back in 1811. And the unique location of this town made it a big centre for timber and also for shipbuilding as well. But Hamburg area was founded back in 2005 by Jens Magnel, Rune Eriksson, Arne Eide and also Egil Hilde. 
So the original premises was an old textile factory that had been built back in 1874 and this was in the middle of a housing estate not far from the As Brewery but they now have a new property in the old train yard in Drammen which is where they remain today. So the brew kit was bought used from a brewery in England and it had a capacity, it had a, about a 9,000 per, per batch capacity if you like but in 2006 their production was 40,000 litres but by 2012 they'd expanded this up to 350,000 litres of beer per year using a new 1800 litre brew kit. Their beers were you know available all throughout Norway for quite a long time but they also exported them for quite a while as well. I was able to find their beers in Japan back in 2015 and I think that might well have been the first one that I reviewed for you. I'm sure that was where I got the uh, the Norwegian wood actually. That was the first time I encountered Handbrugeriet. And they also import a number of different American beers into Norway. I think they've got a deal with Vino Monopolet up there or Vin Monopolite, however you pronounce it, um, where they bring in some of the American beers and then they go across Norway. Um, but in 2014, they invested in some new brewing equipment. And then by 2016, two of the founders had decided to retire. And the brewery ownership structure has changed slightly. And they're now part of a group with the Alsman Brewery and also uh, Hu Fiel, the Seven Mountains Brewery as well. And as of March 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, they've produced around 150 different kinds of beer. And they've got a good variety of stuff in there as well, actually. They've got a more kind of modern canned range, from what I understand. And they've also got the bottle range as well, which are their more old school craft beers, if you can even call it that. We're only talking about, you know, five years or something like that. But a very, very nice brewery, this one. One of the better known Norwegian breweries, along with the likes of Lervig, um, you know, Lervig, uh, Amundsen, Servicium, you know, these guys are probably the best known Norwegian breweries to non-Norwegians, if you like. There's loads of craft breweries up there these days, and I do hope that I can encounter more of those for you on the channel at some point soon. But, um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Hamburg Elliot for the moment. Like I said, my favourite beers from these guys, um, the Odin's Tipple is a lovely Imperial Stout, the Norwegian Woods are really interesting, quite quirky beer with a smoked juniper beer. Um, and they've also got the Belgisk IPA which was very very nice too but check them out, check out the uh, Rate Beer Untapped and uh, Beer Advocate pages to learn more about the different beers that they've done, check out their social media and things like that as well so anyway, on to the other Norwegian brewery in this one, Servicium so as I told you earlier, Servicium are based in Oslo and they were founded back in April of 2015 by three friends this is Pushkin Hama, Morten Borander and Shea Martinson and they started home brewing together in Martin's basement back in early 2013 and uh, they moved into the garage a little bit later on as well. But they called their early creations Brewmance and they went on to win a few home brewing competitions and this led to one of their beers, the Citrus Warehouse, being produced on a larger scale at the Crowbar Brewery in Oslo. Um, but soon they started doing contract brewing and they brewed their beers at different breweries across Scandinavia. This includes Sogards, uh, Dugis down in Gothenburg, Alsman and also the Ego Brewery as well. But today they're a seven person team. And in 2017, they opened their first bar, which is called the Gjökeridit, the Cuckoo's Nest, in the, the Groenland neighbourhood of downtown Oslo. I believe that's the one that's just kind of to the north of the, the bit on the water. I think I was up there, actually, when I was in Oslo um, last year, come to think of it. It's a nice area, so definitely worth checking out. But they're in the Groenland area of downtown Oslo, and they're brewing their beers as a gypsy brewery, or cuckoo brewery, as they are calling it. And as of March 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, they've produced around 35 different kinds of beer, according to Untapped. They can be found quite easily in uh, Copenhagen, in the likes of Shiosk and things like that. You can get them in a lot of the Scandinavian uh, mail order things but I'm not sure how widely distributed they are beyond that but hopefully over the next few years they can get their own brewery set up and uh, get their brewing capacity increased and stuff like that as well but in my experience a really quite nice brewery I've only ever had stouts from them so far right enough so the next review has to be an IPA or something like this so watch this space you will see an IPA reviewed from Servicium over the next little while I'll see about that the next time I get across to Copenhagen when they open the border again because it's closed at the moment so um, yeah that's all you really need to know about Servicium for the moment again if you want to learn more check out the brewery website follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with the latest goings on and you you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about the different beers that they do. So on to the Dutch side of things then, Brauerei Frontal, the first time I'm reviewing one of their beers since like 2016 or 2017 if memory serves me correctly. But anyway, um, Brauerei Frontal 
were founded back in 2015 by Roel Bookins and he'd been a home brewer for a number of years and he'd also previously worked as a chef as well, quite a common route into brewing that actually. But the brewer are based in Breda in the south of the Netherlands and the company was founded at Collective Space for Entrepreneurs and apparently for a while they maintained their tasting room there. In 2016 though they moved to a new site at Fanfabriek in the city and there they opened up a tasting room with a terrace and in doing this they increased their capacity from 3,000 litres of beer to 20,000 litres of beer per year. So they continued to expand over the coming years and they used crowdfunding to buy new brewing equipment and by 2019 they'd expanded so much that they produced around 130,000 litres of beer in that year. Um, that year they also opened up a new and improved tasting room at the Fam Factory which is called the Frontal Cafe which is where you can go and try a lot of the different beers that they do and this year in 2020 they're hoping to produce around 200,000 litres of beer per year. They've also got another crowdfunding round going and they're planning to use that to buy new barrels and things like that to do a barrel aging programme and also to start brewing some sour beers as well from what I understand. But as of March 2020 when I am filming this review for you they've produced 150 different kinds of beer according to Untapped. So that's a pretty impressive number to produce around uh, you know 30 different kinds of beer per year is no mean feat and I'm sure that will go up even more if they are doing a sort of sour beer and barrel aging programme as well actually. So yeah, interesting times ahead for Brauerei Frontal. Like I said, the last beer I reviewed from these guys was called the uh, North and it was a, a stout, I think. I think it was like an 8 or 9% stout from what I remember and it was pretty good actually. So a brewery that I would like to investigate a little bit more but maybe the guys at the Dutch Beer Collective can help me out with that when I get down to visit them. But um, yeah, that's all you need to know about Brauerei Frontal for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website, follow them on Facebook and Instagram, as I said, for the other breweries and you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about the different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. So um, yeah, as you can see with this one, it's got the typical hand Brugeriet artwork on this one. I don't know why it doesn't say. It says Servicium, but it doesn't have any of the Brauerei Frontal things. I'm not sure if the F down here is uh, a reference to Brauerei Frontal actually, so yeah. Really not sure about that. So yeah, you can see the F down there on it. You can see the typical Han uh bottle cap on this one. It's got a little sticker on it that says barrel aged. Um, we got this beer here in Sweden on the 13th of March 2020 through the Tilfeld sortiment of the small parties. Which is um, which is pretty cool, and we do we are do seem to be getting the Han Bregeriet beers a little bit more regularly these days. So hopefully that continues. I do hope we can get some more Servicium things in other Norwegian breweries. We don't really get much in the way of Dutch craft beer, unfortunately. So um, maybe I need to set up a beer swapping service with the the Dutch Beer Collective or something like that. We'll just need to see. But yeah, a ten percent Imperial Milk Stout this one, or Imperial Blueberry Sweet Stout as they are calling it. But it tells you on here this one is barrel aged and it contains lactose. So um, yeah, it should be quite nice. There you can see a little bit of the Servicium artwork. Their beers have got kind of crazy artwork. The cans are very very distinctive actually so you won't, won't miss those if you see them but without further ado let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting and very curious to see what this has in store for us so yeah Ooh. you can smell the blueberries off this already I'll be curious to know if they have actually added blueberry into this one or if they've used the flavor essence like um, Omnipoil tend to do but um, yeah so, as you can see with this one, it's poured a lovely, dark, sort of ebony rosewood colour, which is exactly what you would expect from an Imperial Stout. If I shine the light through this, it does have a little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola coloured edge to it, but mainly it's, uh, you know, mainly it's quite a big, dark, ebony rosewood colour. You can see there's about a quarter finger of a frothy, um, dark tan head on this one, that's fading away to be a very thin foamy layer. When it's a 10% beer, you would expect it to fade away a little bit like that. You can see there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones heading up towards the uh, the bottom of that head, but overall it does look pretty damn nice. So um, yeah, nothing surprising about the appearance of this beer when you consider what style it is, but um, yeah, let's take a closer look at that aroma then and just see how we get on. Oh, that smells really nice actually. Um, it's the barrel aging that jumps out of this one at you straight away. 
I don't know what kind of barrel it would have been. It smells like it would have been bourbon barrel, actually, because it's got that very sweet, almost, you know, sh not quite sugar candy, but not far off it. It's really got a bourbon barrel type um, vibe to it, this one. But at the same time, on top of that, um, there's almost like a wee bit of a kind of, there's almost like a wee teeny bit of like a smokiness in the barrel aging as well, which is interesting. So it could be, you know, it could be Scotch barrel aged, who knows? Um, that would be quite an interesting one, like a smoked, um, uh, you know, uh, sorry, a, a, a smoked Scotch whiskey barrel aged um, Imperial Milk Stout. I think you could get some really interesting flavours out of that, come to think of it. But yeah, you can really smell there is a wee bit of an almost kind of peaty quality within the barrel aging as well. But you get that lovely smooth kind of oaky woody note there. You can smell a little bit of the vanilla. And like I say, there is for me just a little touch of a kind of smoky, peaty sort of thing in that one. But that it's quite minimal. It's a very kind of subtle aroma. I didn't quite expect that from this beer, I have to say. But on top of that, there's a lot of nice kind of sweet chocolate. It really reminds me if you have a a can of that Nesquik powder actually and you smell the inside of it you can really get a nice kind of milky chocolatey quality out of this one there's a few elements of darker chocolate in there but not too dark you know like a sort of 60 70 percent cocoa type chocolate you really get a bit of that out of this one and the chocolate notes come across as quite nice and, and dry almost which is interesting but yeah some brown sugar in there definitely a sweet caramel but you can smell the lactose in this as well. You can smell the lactose giving you an impression of a more milky chocolate, actually, which is very, very nice. I really like how that, um, how this goes together, come to think of it. I really like how, um, how the aroma of this beer, it's all about how everything kind of fits together, actually. It's, it, it's got a lovely kind of backbone to it, this beer, I have to say. Yeah, the chocolatey notes on this are nice. To be honest with you, the blueberry is a lot more subtle than I was expecting it to be. This one for me is all about the kind of caramel, the chocolate and the barrel aging. The blueberries, you get them on the front of the nose, but they're really not as prominent as I was expecting them to be. And it's difficult to tell whether they've actually, they're part of a flavour essence or whether they've been added into the brew, come to think of it. So pay a little bit of attention to that. Um, We'll probably be able to tell from the flavour right enough whether it's uh, flavour essence or whether it's actually been added into the brew. Because, I mean, they could have added them during the barrel ageing stage. That's quite a popular way to do it, actually. And they do have a little bit of tartness, so that makes me wonder if that is what they've done with this beer. But, yeah, the, the malt base of this one really is uh, very nice. The barrel ageing, as I say, has a few quirks to it. It smells very, very smooth, this one, and that's the lactose and the woody notes from the, uh, the barrel ageing. There's a little bit of that kind of peaty smokiness when you first take it in but after that the beer itself really smooths out and becomes more chocolatey and kind of brown sugary there's a lot of lovely kind of subtleties to this one there's maybe one or two kind of nutty notes sitting underneath there but the, the lactose qualities really come out of this beer as well in terms of the hoppiness um, there's a wee bit of earthiness to this one and a little bit of grassiness but otherwise you're not getting too much out of this one it's barrel aged as well that's to be expected and on the fruity side of things, you can smell the blueberries. There's a little bit of that tartness from the blueberries as well. And underneath that, you can get a wee bit of like a kind of juicy figgy quality and maybe some sort of plummy raisiny notes as well. But really, when it's a blueberry uh, sweet stout, you are mainly going to get the blueberries out of this one. So, um, yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck into it. But I think it is pretty nice. It's got a few surprising things about it, this one. So do take the time to, to look at that. So, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Death by Disco, a 10% Imperial uh, Milk Stout uh, or a Sweet Blueberry Stout. Imperial Blueberry Stout, whatever you want to call it, from uh, Hambrigeriet in Dramen to the south of Oslo, Servicium from Oslo itself, and uh, Brauer Frontal from Breda in the Netherlands. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, Skoll, Prost. Ooh. That really is quite nice, actually. Um, it's quite different. It's, it's really not what I was expecting. Um, come to think of it, I can't think of that I've had too many sort of barrel aged imperial milk stouts. I mean, when it comes to the milk stout, if I, you know, if I was just thinking generally, 
if I had the choice between the regular one and the barrel aged one, I probably would go for the, the regular one because I like the big thick mouthfeel and the sort of almost sweetness that you get from the lactose in these beers. Um, you know, I would probably be tempted to go for that. Um, but this one with the barrel aging works out very, very nicely. It's not quite as big and thick and sweet as you'll get from some uh, milk stouts, but it certainly, it certainly is a very, very nice beer light. I have to say. And um, one of my favourite stouts back in the day was the Riptide from Brewdog. That's a beautiful, beautiful beer that. Um, I don't know if they still do that one. I've not seen it in quite a wee while, but Riptide from Brewdog, that was really my first um, kind of sweet stout that got me into the style and it's it's still a bit of a nostalgic beer for me that. But yeah, I really like how this um how this one goes together. Um, if you get the chance to try this beer, definitely have a go at it. It's got some really interesting things going on. So um, yeah, let's break down the flavour of this one then. So in the middle of your palate, you can feel that lovely kind of smooth, um, oaky, woody quality. That blankets the middle of your tongue. You can feel that drying out slightly the further you go into the aftertaste of the beer. Um, you, there's a wee bit of black malt there, you do get a little bit of the black malty dryness but the, the malt base is very very smooth and that will be the barrel aging and the oakiness and it will also be it will also be the um, some of the lactose, you know, it's the lactose will really smooth out this beer quite a bit actually. Um, but it's interesting because you've got the woodiness there, you've got the lactose sitting on top of it and you, when you go into the centre of the palate you can detect a little bit of the kind of brown sugar and it's quite a toasty caramelly note out of this one. It's actually quite a dry kind of brown sugary quality that you get out of this one. It's like the top of a creme brulee. It's almost like that. And then as you move further out from the centre of the palate, you can feel the beer gradually getting more chocolatey. But like I was saying from the aroma, it's quite a dry chocolatey quality actually. It's a little bit like that kind of milkshake type powder that you get from, uh, from Nesquik actually. There's a lot of that kind of vibe going on with this beer. But yeah, I really like how that um, how that goes together. When you've got the liquid on your tongue, it's very, very sweet in the middle of your palate. And there's a good balance between the chocolate and the um, the brown sugars there. It has a little bit more of a kind of treacly, molasses type uh, thing going on in the middle of the palate. You can really feel those darker, big syrupy brown sugars. And then um, towards the back of the palate, you'll start to get the, the darker chocolatey notes, you know, like a sort of 70% cocoa, but you really feel this beer, this beer as you go further and further into the aftertaste, it does dry out. You've seen how long it was since I took a sip of this one, um, but and now the beer really starts to dry out and you get that sort of creme brulee, brown sugary type thing, and also the, um, and also the, the kind of drier chocolatey notes out of this beer. I really like that about this one. Um, it, it's definitely drier towards the back of the palate um, and the lactosey notes, you do get a bit of that lactosey vanilla type quality. As you come further forward on the palate you will get a little bit of that. There's almost like a kind of dark chocolate brownie type quality to this one just before the fruity part of the palate on the tip of the tongue. Um, it's a really interesting beer this one actually. The barrel aging um, is, is very nice in this. There, I don't really get the sort of peaty smokiness um, out of this one, but as I say, that was very minimal in the aroma. There is a wee bit of a kind of charred quality to the um, to the barrel aging in this, which is maybe where I was getting the kind of smoky thing from, but mainly, pardon me, it is just a nice kind of smooth barrel aged quality to there, but the way that the charred notes and the sort of lactosey qualities interact is very, very interesting in this one. The middle of the palate in this is, is really done very nicely. If you go to the centre of your palate and then come forward, you might notice, um, just gradually move forward, you might notice one or two little nutty subtleties to the beer, but that's also um, really quite minimal, actually. So just pay attention to that. On the, um, on the hoppy side of things, then, in the back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there, but that's quite minimal. Most of the hops will have dropped out of this after, um, you know, after so long in the barrel and things. I guess it will be six months or a year in the barrel. But as you come further forward along the sides of the palate, you can feel that just smoothening up a little bit. You get a wee tiny remin uh, 
remnant of floral quality there on the front corners of the palate, then around the front curve of the tongue, the beer's just a little bit lighter and more grassy. And behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. And this has got a few interesting things. So yeah, obviously there's a lot of blueberry in here. And I'm still kind of drawn on whether it's flavour essence or whether it's um, or exactly what it is. There's a few different things going on here. Um, but if you go to the back of that oily bubble, you can feel the sort of cakey notes interacting, the sort of brownie note I was talking about interacting with the fruit. There's a wee bit of a kind of plummy, raisiny note to this one, but then it starts to get a little bit drier. The fruity notes to this beer are a little bit drier than others. So yeah, you've got a little bit of a kind of plummy raisiny note in the beginning, then it juices out to become a lot more kind of figgy and and sort of black currenty, um, black currenty and blackberry-ish. You get a little bit of that going further into the flavour, but around the edge of the palate, at the very front, you can get the kind of blueberry notes. And there's a, there was there was a teeny bit of tartness there in the beginning, but I'm I'm really drawn. I really don't know whether this is flavour essence that's been added into here or whether it is actually blueberries because I think if it was blueberries you would get a little bit more kind of um, tartness out of it but in fairness you're getting some of the blueberries around the very edge of the palate which is what would happen whenever you add fruit to the beer the fruits come out along, along the edge of the palate instead of in that oily bubble where you get the esters from the hops so that's an interesting one I really don't know about this but the blueberry flavours that are in there they add a nice dimension to the, the plums and the, the raisins and the blackberries and stuff like that, um, they don't dominate, they really don't dominate, but they just add a nice little level of complexity actually. So the fruity side of this beer is also very nice in my opinion, and the fruity side complements the, the other elements that are going on in there as well. You do get this whole infused thing, which is what you would expect from a, a nice big barrel aged stout. But I mean overall, this one gives you a lot to think about this beer. But I think it's really pretty solid. I mean, you can't ask for uh, for much more than that. I'm not sure if there is a non-barrel aged version of this one, but um, it didn't. It wasn't listed on Untapped or anything like that. They didn't have two listings for a a BA version and a non-BA version. But as it stands, I think this is a, a very very nice beer actually. So thumbs up to a uh, hand. Servicium and to Frontal for this. They've pulled off a very nice Imperial sort of sweet stout if you like. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this but obviously at 10% as an Imperial stout this one is a little bit of a treat. Um, so in terms of the uh, mouthfeel of this beer then, um, yeah pretty full bodied, probably at the bottom end of full bodied. It's barrel aged so the, the mouthfeel will be a little bit Lest I always feel the mouthfeel drops a little bit and becomes a bit thinner with barrel aging to get these infused flavours. Um, carbonation is very, very smooth. It's a big kind of thick, oily type mouthfeel that you're getting out of this one. In terms of IBUs and stuff, um, I think there is probably a... Oh, this one's got, it must be about 50-ish IBUs. It's not going to blow the head off you in terms of bitterness, but I do think there is a wee bit of bitterness to this one, both from the barrel aging and from just the fact that it is a stout, but you've got a lovely smoothness to this beer. The malt base and the barrel aging qualities gives it a lovely smoothness. So there is a degree of sweetness there, a bit of toastiness from the malt base as well. And you've also got some lovely um, juicy fruity qualities to this one. It's quite an oily fruity character that comes out of this one as well. There's not really any tartness. There's well, maybe a little bit of tartness from the blueberries as well. But overall, it's just a lovely, lovely beer, this one, and one that I would recommend you try if you get the chance. So, um, yeah, let's round off the review there. A lovely sweet stout, this one, and I do hope to try a few more sweet stouts from the breweries involved here. Hamburgeri, I know, are very good with this. Servicium, I've tried a couple of their stouts, and it would be nice to review a few more beers from Frontal, but we just don't get much in the way of Dutch craft beer up here in Scandinavia at the moment, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, a lovely beer, this one, and I'm glad I was able to review it. So, um, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Hamburg area at Servicium and from Blaurai Frontal as well. Like I say, you will see more Norwegian beers over the next little while, definitely. Hopefully there can be more Dutch reviews for you at some point, but if you are interested in that, make sure you check out uh, Thomas Opent, uh, Beer Geek Holland and Dutch Beer Geek uh, part of the, and the, uh, the Dutch Beer Collective, which is their collective group that they have, Beeromaniac as well. 
Um, they've got some very interesting reviews down there, keeping you up to date on the Dutch beer scene. Make sure you give those guys your patronage. And uh, yeah, this one was a really nice beer to review and I hope you've enjoyed it. Check out my social media, check out the three breweries involved here, check out the Dutch Beer Collective and I will catch you guys later. Until the next time, it's Slange just now. This was the Death by Disco, an Imperial Milk Stout at 10% ABV with blueberries added to it from Hamburgeriet and Drammen to the south of Oslo, Servicium from Oslo itself and Brauerei Frontal from Breda in the Netherlands. Slanger, Skoll, Proust, catch you guys very soon. Cheers.